He, uh, he landed a good uppercut on that first shot I took, and that kind of buzzed me a little bit, but I feel like I was doing a good job moving my head. It maybe didn't look like it. I don't know. I'll have to go back and watch it, but uh, I didn't get hurt too much by anything else. And uh, yeah, I felt good. It was good to get the win. You know, it, the hard, the first one's the hardest one to get, I think. So now that I got that, we we'll just keep the the train rolling. Does it feel better when it's a little harder to get the win rather than maybe going in and like knocking someone out in like five seconds? Uh, I don't know if it feels better. I'll take a five second knockout anytime, but uh, it's good. You know, it proves a lot to myself uh, in terms of like, do you have the dog in you? Are you willing to climb Grip Mountain? All these kind of things we talk about on our team and. Until you do it, you know, you might think you can do it, but until you do it, you don't really know. And I did it tonight, and I know I can replicate that whenever I need to. Uh, and I think that gives me an attribute that maybe other people don't have. So I, I feel really good about it. Did you kind of expect to, it to be a tough fight, or, or did, were there some surprises in there you weren't expecting? I think in all my interviews, I said the first four minutes are going to be nuts. It's going to be chaos. Uh, he's probably one of the most explosive guys in the division. So... I knew it was going to be a little bit of weathering that early storm. You know, I, I felt like I was going to meet him more and it was going to be more of a collision instead of me, you know, more on the defense. But like I said, he buzzed me early a little bit, so I was trying to recover. Uh, but once he shot in and, and I got his neck, I, I knew that was going to be ball game. You know, I, I've been hitting that all camp and, and I felt really good with my guillotine. Um, so once I locked it in, I knew, okay, I can settle in here. I got enough time to really crank on this. And, and I saw his hand go up and I knew right then, like, okay, we got this in the bank. So, uh, yeah, I knew it was going to be wild though. He's a, he's a wild fighter. He's never shown anything different other than being super explosive and powerful. So I fully expected that. And before the submission, how dangerous did you feel like the fight was going for you? Did you really feel like you were ever into any danger? Uh, no, not really. You know. Mark Smith was like, hey, you got to move, you got to move. And I'm, I literally told him, hey, I'm good. You know, I said that to him. Uh, so I felt I was there, you know, I was in it. Uh, obviously, he was landing good shots and, and props to him for that. But nothing was hurting me. I got a good chin. Uh, our team has a chin of the year award. That's really why I did that. I was just trying to win chin of the year, if anyone asks. So uh, that's what I'm telling. That's my story. I'm just sticking to it. And when do you want to get back in there? Uh, hopefully soon. You know, I'm, I'm always in camp. Uh, it's funny at Factory X, you know, we don't really do camps. We just train year-round. So uh, I'm, I'm ready. I'm game whenever. I want to get on a card maybe with one of my teammates, Anthony Smith, Dustin Jacoby. Uh, it's always good when we're in camp together. I feel like we push each other really, really well. You know, Dustin just won last week, and, and we were grinding this whole camp out. So, you know, a lot of props to him and just getting me ready and feeling good mentally. You know, he came back out here with me. I really appreciate him, Colin Anglin, all my coaches. So it's been good. You know, hopefully I can get in soon. You know, there's been what now? five, four fights, all finishes, all pretty spectacular. Where do you think you rank on that for maybe a bonus? <laughs> well, uh, the housing market in Denver is pretty tough. I'm trying to get a house, so I'm going to say number one. Uh, me and my wife, we're, we're putting in offers this week, so Dana, hook me up. Thank you. Thank you. Hey, Cody. Um, what's the uh, thing on your arm? Uh, so it's my daughter's name, Kingsley, in purple, which is uh, epilepsy awareness. Uh, I've been kind of vocal about it. Nobody's really asked me too much. Uh, the UFC did a story, but she has a very rare genetic uh, condition that I actually found out the week of my first UFC fight. So that was a really hectic week. Uh, it's called ALG 13. There's only like 40 documented cases of it. Um, and basically, kids that have it are predisposed to epilepsy, seizures, like major delays developmentally. So uh, the UFC made this for me, kind of just honor that and, and honor her and, you know, she, she gives me a lot of motivation for what I'm fighting for. And uh, yeah, I, I thought it was really cool they did that and allowed me to uh, promote that on their platform. How important was it to like weigh in with it and show everybody? Yeah, it means a lot to me. Like I said, uh, being a parent's hard and uh, it's scary. It's, just, it's way scarier than fighting. And um, when something goes wrong that's out of your control, you know, it's really tough to deal with. And me and my wife have been dealing with it. My team, you know, I got all these guys behind me and uh, it's not the easiest, you know, there's, there's a lot of dark days, but <clears throat> we stay hopeful, you know, we work really hard with her, we treat her like any other kid, and um, yeah, she just turned one, so uh, it feels good to get the win, and uh, go see, I'll see them tonight, they're in Vegas, so it'll be good. You said that you found out right, right before your UFC debut, man, um, so I mean, how, what was the, like, the, the pressure on your shoulders, and like, just like, the, that week? Oh, yeah, it was crazy. You know, it was the day of my weight cut, so emotions are already kind of high. And uh, I was zoomed into a call with our neurologist, and, you know, they gave us this news that your life, your your life, your daughter's life is going to be completely altered moving forward. And 
<clears throat> that's tough to deal with. And uh, I remember right before I walked out, you know, just for a split second, I was like, dang, I hope this fight goes 15 minutes because that's 15 minutes I don't got to think about real life. And that's not necessarily the best thought you want to have when you walk out to a fight. But uh, we're doing better now. And uh, like I said, it's a day-by-day -day thing. You know, there's not, like I said, there's only 40 cases. So it's uh, like there's not a great prognosis in terms of the number of cases and what the outlook is. So we're hopeful and uh, we're just working on it. So, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Um, what, what's your tattoo? It's, 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 it's pretty dope. Yeah, my boy Kevin Watson, uh, he's in Denver. I'm going to take this to shout him out. Yeah, he's been working on this uh, Viking sleeve. Uh, we got some words and runes. You know, we pick a word every year uh, at Factory X. My word for 2021 uh, was control because I feel like I needed to focus on things I could control, and I got that in runes here. And then my word for this year was fire because I felt like my life is a fire, fighting is a fire. you got to be willing to enter the fire to – uh, have some success and, and not be afraid to get burnt. And I feel like that was perfect for this fight. You know, I really entered the fire and got maybe got burnt a little bit, but uh, was able to get out with a win. So, yeah, he did a killer job on this. I still got to finish the inside. It's tough when, like I said, we don't do camps. We're always in training. So trying to train with that. If I told my coach, hey, I can't practice today. I got a tattoo, he might string me up from the rafters. So <laughs> I don't do that. <laughs> awesome, man. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Hey, Cody to the back. So congratulations on your big win. Um, you have shown that you have the ability to adapt a situation and see the opportunity to win. So your opponent, he's pretty strong. And like you said, you went down a little bit after a few punches from him. So did you know that you will have to um, weather the storm in order to finish him? Uh, yeah, I definitely thought I'd have to weather a storm. I felt like uh, I'd be able to be a little more active in the exchanges. But like I said, he buzzed me early. So at that point, I was like, okay, I got to move. I can't really take a big shot here. Because also, you know, in studying film on him, I'd say his biggest knock is that he doesn't have a gas tank. So while I was getting beat, it was like, okay, but at the end of this round, what's he going to have left? And I was pretty confident it wasn't going to be much. So even if he would have got out of that round, I was like, okay, I'm going to pace this kid second and third, and I'll find the finish then. Uh, but – yeah, I knew it was going to be a storm. That's like I said, he's explosive, he's powerful, he's strong. I knew he was going to come forward. Uh, but yeah, I, I was fully expecting of that. Do you have the next fighter that you would like to fight? Yeah, I want to fight Andre Petrovsky. Awesome. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.